Hello, this is Joshua and welcome to this video. In this video, I will be showing you how you to deploy a Laravel application into Vercel. Now we know Vercel is typically for JavaScript and Node.js applications, but in this video, we'll be deploying a Laravel application into Vercel using one of the community PHP runtimes. To follow along in this video, you need three things. You just need a local environment where you can set up a Laravel application. You need a GitHub account. And of course, you would need a Vercel account for your project. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right here in the Laravel documentation, we can see how to set up a Laravel application. You would need to get the Laravel installer. Okay, by running this command, I have already run this, so I wouldn't need to do that again. And then after having that run, you can use Laravel new commands to set up your project. And I'll be doing that right now. I'm using VS code. So in here, I'm just going to run Laravel new, and then you just give your project a name. So I'm just going to call this Laravel Vessel app and um, enter. Uh, so just want to select some options. I do not want any starter kits. I'm just saying none. I'll be using PHP units and then this will begin to set up my project. And now it's asking me for further questions um, if I need a database. I don't really need one for this. So I'm just going to use SQLite. And next it's asking if I want to install the NPM dependencies and run build and I'm just going to say yes to that and it's going to install um, npm dependencies and we can see the, that has completely built so i'm just going to open up this project right here in vs code now my project has been set up and you can see i have it open here to run this we just need to run a composer run dev and this will run my php server and we can see that's running over here i will click on this to view that and you can see my laravel app lo running locally now this is the application that we want to get deployed into Vercel. so the first step to getting this deployed to uh, Vercel is to push this to a remote repository so i'm going to push this into git uh, if you don't have a git account you can sign up or if you do just sign in i'm going to sign into mine and create a new repository so right in my GitHub account, I have created an empty repository and I'm just going to push the code here. So I do not have a repository locally. So I'm just, I just need to set one up by following these instructions in here. So uh, first of all, I want to stop my server and then create a new repository by running git init. And I do want to add, well, every file that I have here by running um, git add. And then I would follow up with the rest of the commands I got from GitHub to push this. This has been connected. It has been pushed. And if I do refresh here, uh, yeah, we'll see that I do have my code pushed into uh, GitHub. Now that we have this project set up on GitHub, we just need to configure our project properly so that it can be deployed into Vercel. If we go back to our project, there are some setup that we need to do in here. And to be able to configure this for Vercel, we need to create a new file in the roots called vercel.json. Now in vercel.json, we're going to configure our project. And let us reduce this here. Okay, so this is how you configure your project for Vercel. Now for a typical um, node application Vercel knows how to oh, deploy that but when it comes to php we need to be able to define the runtime for this application so in your vercel.json file we just have this basic configuration now this is a schema that kind of like offers um, a loose validation for the kind of configuration that is expected to come into this file next we would have an output directory so the output directory just tells us to ourselves where should be the root of my application when it is running so this will be root directory itself which is the public and if you remember a laravel application is served from the public directory this is the main thing that needs to be set up for your php application now we need to set up a function uh, Vercel is uh, serverless and it works with serverless functions and we need to define a new serverless function to say, hey, I want a serverless function that runs with the PHP runtime. And that has that setup. 
and then we do have the rewrite which says for every request that i get if you do not find a file that has that same path name send it to the serverless function if we do come to public and maybe the favicon.ico is requested well it will solve that but if it's a file that is not found then it will redirect that request to the lambda.php serverless function what is this lambda.php serverless function well it's just well basically a php file that will handle our request it could be called anything i just use the lambda.php in this in this case and if we can see that file doesn't exist so what is going to be with that file the lambda.php file is basically just going to be the same contents that we have in our index.php file Vercel wouldn't take uh, something in the public directory as a serverless function it wants it in the api directory and for that reason we need to create the new api directory and put those um, the same code in there so i just need to just create a new file and that file will be the api lambda dot php and so we have that and then all we just need to do is to get all the contents from the index.php file and put into here now there's something else we need to do so remember i said um in our vassal.json configuration that it will only forward requests that are not or files that are not found to the lambda function because this index.php file is in the root directory and sometimes index.php files are treated as root files there is a tendency for vassal to serve this as a static asset which is not what we want so to be able to tell Vercel not to serve this but i mean still have it in our git repository we can have a new file called dot Vercel ignore and we can tell of ourselves files we don't want to be included when our project is being built and for there we're just going to include the public like index.php file now with this setup we are ready to create our project in Vercel. Uh, for that, I'm just going to include this new files that has been added. I'm just going to commit that and uh, say that. Um, and I will push those to Git. We can go back to Git and if we refresh here, we'll see that we have those new files. And the next thing we need to do is to go to Vercel and set up our project. So when logged into Vercel, you just need to click on the create project and you should see this page. So we need to import our new project, but uh, you might not see it if you haven't given uh, permission. So you want to um, adjust GitHub app permissions. And in there, you would want to find your uh, repository. So I'll click on my account. You want to scroll to find where you can add your repository. I selected only selected repository so that I can just give explicit uh, permissions. And I'm going to find that uh, repository that I have, which is Laravel, Laravel Vercel app. And I'm just going to select that. And after selecting and adding that project, I'm just going to click on save. Now, once I've done that, that um, project is going to be immediately available for me to import. And I'm just going to click on import. Here is where you can configure your uh, project. By default, Vercel tries to use Vit. And when you do have a Vercel, the JSON find I didn't find there's no difference. But since we do have one, I'm just going to select um, order in this case. And then you want to see where is your root. The root is, well, basically the main directory. We would want to add environment uh, variables to our project. For the environment variables, I would go back to our Laravel app. And if you go to this .env file, you would see that we do have um, some environment variables here. And well, while I don't need all for this particular setup in Vercel, I do need to take some of them. Particularly, I need to take this um, app prefixed ones. So I'm just going to take all those four. And uh, you could just paste them in a Vercel wheel format. And in here, I want to change the app env to production. And the bug, I just want to use false for the bug. 
and we can change the app url and i'm going to change that soon so that i'll also show you how you can change your eav file after uh, making a deployment there are a couple of other things i need to set up for now let's just deploy this application and see how it goes so you're just going to hit deploy to watch it deploy so i'm just going to wait for it and uh we can actually check your logs and we can see that it tries to okay now you see it's setting up the um, php runtime the versal php runtime and you can see it installing composer dependencies so uh, we're just going to give it a second and it will be done okay now our application has successfully deployed but if you might have already see this that even though it deployed successfully it isn't working just right so uh for now i'm just going to continue to dashboard and explain why this is okay so deployment successful application running uh not at all um the reason for this and why we are getting this and i can click our uh, production link to see this live and yeah we get that same screen here the reason for this is um remember Vercel is a serverless platform and when we're deploying serverless we don't have full access to everything one of such is the file system so we can't just create files as we wish Laravel tries to do that when writing logs, when creating configuration files, and because of that, uh, the application fails. But we do have a way of escape because Vercel has a temporary folder that you can write to, but it's a temporary folder for a reason, being meaning that the files there can get deleted or overwritten. But for our case, it is fine because Anytime we get, we deploy, we would want our views to get overwritten. And for our logs, well, we're not going to write our logs there. We're just going to leave them for Vercel to handle. And for us to do that, we are going to overwrite our environment variables. Like I said, I was going to show you how to change your environment variables. But first, I want to copy my root um, domain. Um, that's the one that Vercel gave me. You can add a new domain, but I, I don't want to do that for this project. So um, you go to your environment variable from settings, environment variables. And in here, we want to add new environment variables. But first, I want to change the um, app URL. I'm just going to click on edit. And um, we're going to change this to this one, HTTPS, the Laravel app URL, and save that. Then in addition, we want to add a couple of new environment variables and I'm just going to put all of them in here. Now, there are quite a number of them, but I want to explain. So we're basically saying, hey, Vassel, I want you to write, or rather Laravel, I want you to write the configuration file into this same directory. Do the same for the route file, do the same for the events file, the package file, the services file. And when you compile down the views, yeah, I want you to put that into the temp directory as well. You can use the standard error um, channel for the logs. I want you to use cookies for session driver and don't create a file for session driver. Uh, this is just to ensure the assets uh, URLs are from the base um, directory. The cache as well should use a PHP array and not files. And the cache store as well should be an array. So these are all the configurations that we need to set up so that Laravel is able to work without creating files in directories that will not be permitted by Vazel. So I'm just going to save this. Now, once this is saved, we would see we'll be prompted with that we can redeploy since the environment has changed. You can redeploy from here or, you know, you can go to your deployments tab. I'm just going to redeploy from here and redeploy. Okay, redeployment is happening and we can check deployment to see the progress. So it's building and we're just going to give it well, some seconds again. And yeah, it is ready. And so you see, we can see our preview now. And by the time I click on this link and hello Laravel, you've de successfully deployed a Laravel application to Vercel and this is functioning properly. To further prove this to you and to show you how fun this is, I'm going to add a new page to this application. So back in my project, I'm just going to go to the resources directory and the views, and I'm just going to create a new view file. And um, in here, I'm just going to create a file called about.blade.php. And uh, I just have some contents, just like a dummy about page. I'm just going to put in there and save that. 
and next we would want to go to our routes web and add a new route so this will be slash about and i want this to serve the about view and we can save that and then we can add both files and um commit those and push so i've pushed that and the beautiful thing about ourselves is once you update your repository it will automatically start to deploy so if we go back there you can see that it is already building the updates to our page so i was just going to give this well a few more seconds and i would see the update to our page will be launched so if i um, come in here yeah it's been deployed already and we see everything is still working as fine and i can re refresh this page well still there and then we can go into the new about route and here sure enough you can see uh my about page and click back to home and yeah we will have ourselves a functioning laravel application deployed live to for sale so we can see how interesting it is uh this is not the node.js application it's a native php application and i think this is actually interesting and i mean you get to deploy this for free depending when your users grow and it's really amazing to leverage the power of a cell there are still some limitations to this application not for the from the php point of view but from integrating front-end builds with vite especially if you want to use some of the templates that laravel has and for now we haven't even connected this to a database but it's very much possible to use this with a database if you want me to do a video of how you can set up do a more complex setup with this laravel vessel deployment just leave a comment or some likes and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do another video about this but for now uh, do enjoy the setup uh, let me know if this helps you and uh, i'll see you in the next video thank you